Cybersecurity is a very important subject that needs to be addressed in every network. Especially becoming relevant in today's digital age, where cybercrime is becoming rampant. According to a survey made by ComputerWorld.com in June 2011, it predicts that 1 in 30 people will have their identity stolen at any given time. It also states that 73 of Americans have been already victims of cybercrime. It also states that, 60, uh, that the average time that a person needs to take in order to clear their name is 600 hours, and that 11.6% of all identity theft occurs online. 31% are due to unsecured networks, and 90% of the companies in the US report that their security has been breached at least once, and 59% that have at least been breached twice or more. This results in losses that is, they were estimated in the trillions globally in 2008. Cybercrime, is, uh, for this and all reasons, is a very serious subject and we need to be aware of, of the ways we have to protect ourselves and our data. The first thing you have to do in an organization or where you have many resources to protect is to understand the different kinds of attacks that you can be subject to. These are just some of the attacks that is, um, you can be affected with. There are two main categories, passive and active. Passive, some examples of passive attacks include eavesdropping, which consists in listening to packages from other parties. This is also sometimes referred as sniffing. And there are specific software tools designed to do this, and I will introduce you to them in a future video. There is also traffic analysis attacks which consists in learning about the network for observing its traffic patterns. There is also footprinting, which is also called network mapping, and that consists in determining the software and hardware components that the network has in order to exploit weaknesses. Some examples of active attacks include denial of service, many times referred as DOS, and this is where a service, like a web page for example, gets flooded with requests suddenly until it crashes. And this is very common again in, in on the web. There is also masquerading or spoofing where a person uh, pretends to be somebody else. And normally this is done by uh, using a different IP address than the one the person has. I will talk more about this later. There is also message modification, where the message was modified in, in the transmission, and package replay, where a package is transmitted again in order to gain some kind of access or cause some damage. Now, the first thing we have to do to protect ourselves or our network is to determine or establish a security policy or policies. A way to do this is simply by determining which resources we need to protect and write this down in a list. Also, we need to know what type of users to protect the resources from. This is also very important. So this is an example where I put here a worksheet and you will have all the resources listed here on the left side. And many times it says number because these resources will include a barcode for inventory purposes and that will be wise to include here too. Now, after you do that, and you type down your resources, maybe a description, their barcode, it's also important to assign a couple of numbers to it. You can assign something that we called a risk importance factor, or RI. And this RI will be in a scale of 0 to 10. And it will determine how much risk or how much in risk you think this resource is. 10 will be maximum risk, so it will be the most risk, and 0 will be nothing, no risk. After you do that, the same you can uh, you assign another number to, the, to each resource called the importance. And just how important do you think that resource is to you or the organization? Of course, if it's an important server, that, then the number it will be higher. And it's the same thing, the same scale, 0 to 10. Once you have these two values that we call RI and WRI, you multiply them to get the weighted risk 
or WRI. So you have RI, which is your risk factor, and you have WI, which is your weight or importance, and then you have your weighted risk factor, WRI. Now, why is it important to calculate this and do this exercise? Well, first of all, you are getting a list of all your resources. And this is also forcing you to uh, realize what resources are more important in your network and also is forcing you to have an analysis or an estimation of the risk factor for each of these resources. Finally, it's giving you a conclusion with this number, WRI, telling you that the numbers that have the higher value or the higher WRI are the resources that need to be protected the most or have more secure or stronger measures.